Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Ole Brugger and if you're new here and you like my content, I really hope I'll earn your subscription. In this video, I will talk to you about speed paints and how they influenced and changed the way I work with miniatures and models and props and all the stuff because they did a deep impact and I used them on a daily basis. So let's get into it. While I tell you all about my experience with speed paints, I will walk you through how I paint this hill giant. And to start with, I use this palette bone. To make a long story very short, we still have to go back to 1988. I was 14 years old and I was just getting into some Warhammer. I had a cousin, he was very geeky and nerdy about all this Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons and all that stuff. So a great shout out to my cousin Brian for all his geekiness and introducing me to fantasy and painting miniatures. And he actually taught me uh, how to paint miniatures. I bought my first paint and it was awful paint. It was Elkhead based paint and you needed mineral spirits or turpentine to thin it and clean your brushes and it smelled awful. I never got very good at painting miniatures and after a couple of years I lost my interest in painting. But fantasy, roleplay and Dungeons and Dragons just moved on to my computer and I got really hooked on those computers. I kept on playing fantasy games, Dungeons and Dragons and all that stuff. But here, about four years ago, I started to play Dungeons and Dragons again. At the same time, I also kickstarted my YouTube channel and started to stream on Twitch. And here you can see the tabletop TV I made about three years ago. And let's not forget the Hill Giant. His body tone is done and now I'll use the Fire Drake for his beard and hair. This is one of my new favorite browns from the Speed Paint 2.0 set. Moving forward, I started to 3D print miniatures and it was a new world that opened to me and it was so exciting. And I printed and I printed and I still print a ton of miniatures. I was still trying to refresh and relearn how to paint miniatures. And I started to stream and share it on Twitch and I got better over time and it actually went pretty fast. I'm not very proud of the first models I painted on stream. Here are some of the models from three years ago and yeah, that was where I was at at the time. Well, the hill giant's beard and body is almost done and now I will try to dry brush over it just to get some more highlight and more color into it. I'll use this banshee brown. I still use war paints and uh, acrylic based paints, not 100% speed paint. I also got an airbrush and uh, this is actually the first stream where I used an airbrush and it was amazing. A new world opened up to me and I forgot to press record painting the hill giant's eyes, but I gave each eye a drop of off white and then I used the 0.05 pen for the pupils. For the scars, I will use one of the more famous speed paints, Slaughter Red. In the beginning of my paint reboot, I primed all my miniatures totally black. Later on, I started to experiment with a Cineful Highlight. The Cineful Highlight didn't actually appeal to me in the beginning because I still used ordinary acrylics paints. And uh, they were so opaque that the Cineful Highlight didn't get through. It, it just gave me an idea of where to paint how to highlight and use the shadows. I could get some quite fun results just dumping some washes directly onto the primed miniature with the Cineful highlight, but it wasn't until I got my hands on a couple of Citadel contrast paints. And then I finally understood the meaning of a Cineful highlight. But the Citadel paints, they were not consistent. Some of them are very opaque and some of them are very translucent. And then last year, the army painter introduced speed paint and it was a new world for me. I bought the mega pack with all 24 paints and I loved every single one of them. For the hill giant skirt I will still use the fire drake as I used for the hair and beard. A while ago I made a YouTube video about how to paint a yeti and here I use all the basic techniques of a cinephile highlight and using speed paints, dry brushing and so on. 
and this just shows how fast you can do a paint job and still get a decent result for a miniature to go on the table in a game like Dungeons and Dragons. I'll use this noble skin on the edge of the shield and talking about edges and using speed paints it is very important to always have a very light background for your paint it's almost like using a paint book this is just in 3d so if you paint outside the lines you have to erase it and do it over again and for that purpose i usually put on a drop of white or off-white paint and just paint over it again when it's dry and here a couple of months ago army painter released Speed Paint 2.0 and I got the Mega Pack and it's awesome. They introduced the Speed Paint Metallics and here I'm jumping back in the footage of painting with the Broadsword Silver. The Broadsword Silver is pretty dark as a metallic paint but it has a cool look to it. Uh, I will just prefer to highlight with a shiny silver and uh, then I will get the result I like. But again, Speed paints are not 100% foolproof. You still need to do some work afterwards. And as a conclusion to using speed paints on a daily basis, I must say this is the way I will paint miniatures for now. But who knows? I still have a ton of skills to learn. I still need to learn non-metallic metallics and glazing and color blending and stuff like that. But this is a way for me to get miniatures on the table in a quick way and at the same time having a ton of fun painting them. For the base I will use the Gravelord Grey. This has become one of my favorite basing colors for dirt and rocks because it has a grayish brown effect to it. And using this troll claws as a dry brush on top of it, it just makes it pop off. This is all the colors I used for painting this hill giant. And I used 23 different colors. It was primarily speed paints, some acrylic wall paints and a couple of airbrush paints, but it was because I didn't have the correct color for it. And here he is, the hill giant. I'm very satisfied about how this guy turned out. It took me about five hours to paint and that was including dry times and minor breaks and stuff like that. But it was an intensive, continuous work. When something was drying, I was painting something else on him. It's an okay time to spend on a miniature this size and with the details as well. Thank you for watching this video to the end. And I really liked sharing uh, my experience with speed paints with you. Uh, I hope you liked this video and you will subscribe to my channel if you're not already have done so and i will see you soon with another project i just need some stuff shipped here goodbye for now